the pleasure of speaking today with Nina Turner. Nina Turner is the woman, the state senator from the state of Ohio, a Democrat who's introduced a very interesting and somewhat controversial bill, but we should know this about Nina Turner. She is the first woman elected to represent Cleveland's Ward 1 in city council. She was recently honored with the 2010 Women of Excellence Award, also the Distinguished Governmental Service Award, also named to the Power 100, Northeast Ohio's most influential people. You should also know she is a ranking minority member of the Judiciary Criminal Justice Committee. She is a member of the Board of Trustees of the United Way of Greater Cleveland. And that's not all. She is the member of the Executive Board of the Cleveland Police Foundation. And I have to tell you, Nina, I have shortened the list so that we have time to talk to you. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. So, you know, first of all, tell us about the bill. What is it? What is it designed to do? Well, Senate Bill 307 is designed to protect men in their reproductive health. You know, Carol, so much time and attention has been shown to women uh, throughout this country, particularly at this moment in time, with regards to their sexual health. And I want to make sure that we level the playing field in terms of equality and make sure that we show the right amount of uh, sexual health concern for men as well. So my bill will require a man who believes he's in need of erectile dysfunction drugs to seek a physician's uh, help in making sure that he fully understands the consequences and the potential risk. He would have to have an affidavit signed by a former or current uh, partner. He would also have to undergo a cardiac test to make sure and talk to a sex therapist because we want to make sure that this is physical and not just psychological. we got to guide men because obviously without government intrusion, men are not smart enough to make their own decisions. Well, they certainly feel that way about women, don't they? They do. So, you know, you make a very another very good point, Nina, about men who care about us, who are concerned about us. They are our husbands, our boyfriends, our sons, our uncles, our fathers, etc. You're asking them to join in this movement as well. Tell us about that. I sure am, Carol. And I want your viewers to know that so many people, but men in particular, have really reached out, uh, calling me on the telephone or via email to say that they do support and respect women, and that they think that this conservative push is lunacy, and that it is totally disrespectful to the very women that they love and respect. So I definitely want to thank men who understand what's going on here, the ones that respect our intellect, and they respect our ability to make decisions for our own bodies. And, you know, Nina, it's interesting because I know there are a lot of critics out there, people who think this bill is, is silly, it's a you know, waste of time, et cetera. But let's talk a little bit about these erectile dysfunction drugs because these are very dangerous drugs. First of all, let's talk about the fact that they are highly regulated uh, by the Food and Drug Administration. We know that Viagra for one patented in 1996, approved by the FDA uh, for prescription only sale in 1998. It became a financial success, exceeding annual sales of $1 billion every year since its introduction. This is a dangerous drug, however, and it is also a drug that is being used as a recreational drug. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how that plays into uh, the bill that you want to get passed in terms of the safety of our men? Yeah, no, it, it really is, Carol. And again, it points to the double standard. I mean, some of the side effects of Viagra and other, other drugs that are used in this way, I mean, priapism, for example, um, a loss of sight, loss of hearing, and men who have heart complications, they could even have a heart attack. So, yes, I am very serious about this bill, and I'm serious about protecting men's health and the recreational aspect of this. I mean, sure, you know, almost every single insurance provider in this country will easily insure Viagra, yes. but, at, yes. but that same respect is not shown to women when it comes to our reproductive health. It is if they're trying to take us back to the dark ages, you know, that women are only fit to be barefoot and pregnant, and if we're not procreating, we shouldn't exist. We, we only exist to procreate and to serve men, and it is ridiculous. And we're not going to take it anymore. And, and, you know, and Nina, and the other thing, let's talk about that procreating. They want to keep us barefoot and pregnant. I don't care what the circumstances are of the impregnation. You cannot get a, an abortion, or it's making it very difficult for you to uh, make the, have the right to choose. My question is this. What is the other side of this? If men are out making baby after baby after baby, they're getting Viagra, they're using the Viagra to make even more babies, make it as many babies as they can, where's the child support companion bill to make sure that women who are going to be sunk into poverty with all these children they're raising, how are they going to get their child support? I don't hear anything on the conservative side, the Republican side, talking about child support. 
And Carol, you know, you're absolutely right. All of this care for an unborn or unborn child, it stops when that child is born. Government is not there, and in some cases, men who abdicate their responsibility to take care of their children, that's not all men, but the men who would do that, they're not there. So you're absolutely right. If government is going to force women to have babies, I mean, even here in the state of Ohio, here, a bill was introduced to prohibit a woman from having an abortion, even in instances of rape and incest. What disrespect to women, but you're absolutely right. If government wants to push that, then government becomes the new daddy, and government should support that child from birth all the way through college. It's only fair. It's only fair. I, mean, I can't even imagine what it must be like to have it, uh, impregnated as a result of incest. We know who those people are. They're typically a family member. So someone yeah. rapes, a, and they're usually a young child. So somebody rapes a young child or a young woman. She has to have the baby. She has to raise the baby. And she can't even go and get child support from that person to raise that baby that she doesn't even want because she, it was a product of rape. We know that today in the United States Congress, and from the state of Illinois, we actually have people in Congress who have tremendous amounts of money uh, that they reportedly owe in child support. I'm speaking of Joe Walsh, a Republican, the Tea Party candidate from the state of Illinois. He's in Congress. His wife says, and she has sued him for it. He owes her $100,000 in child support. How can this be? What is this double standard? It is unfortunate. It is, it is absolutely unfortunate. There are women who are in the same situation as, as, as the woman that you described, the congresswoman's uh, ex-wife. Again, this total war and disregard and disrespect for women. Here, you know, our former mothers already fought this battle. You know, they already fought this battle. And it is a shame that we are going backwards in this country. I received an email from an elderly woman who talked about how in the 1970s, when she wanted to get her tooth tied, she had to have her husband sign a permission slip, Carol, in the uh -huh. 70s. I mean, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And to your point, the Republicans or the right-wingers, because it's not all Republicans, but those who believe that women are second-class citizens should also have enough courage and enough guts to say that they are going to step up and provide for these very children. It all stops when the child is born. We have a disproportion of children living in poverty in this country and also in the state of Ohio. We have too many children who are not graduating from high school due to cuts to, to funding for, for K-12 education and higher education. So you know what? They would better use their time to find the policy initiatives that help people who are here right now live a good life instead of trying to regulate a woman's womb. Absolutely, and we know we're, we're going to know they're serious, Nina. We will know they're serious when they tackle that issue of child support, which they never seem to touch. I want to talk about some of the companion bills, bills that are similar to yours, because this is a movement that is going around the nation, and I have to say, you have really sparked a fire. Tell us about some of those companion bills. Thanks, sir. And, and so my sister legislators, I will call them across the country, they're stepping up, too. Uh, we have a, a bill that I'm sure most of your, your viewers are familiar with in Missouri, and I think it's also uh, Georgia, where men will not be allowed to get a vasectomy unless his <laughs> life is in danger. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, how creative <laughs> is that? But we have in Wilmington, uh, in, a, in a city council, in a Wilmington uh, uh, city council, that men should not be allowed to destroy their semen because that is a potential child. Absolutely. And, and these bills just really point out to the lunacy of all of these types of bills that are cropping up. And you know, Carol, what the, what the terrible thing about this is, is that whenever we talk about women's reproductive health, whenever a man or anybody else introduces legislation with regards to regulating woman, a woman's reproductive health, everybody takes it seriously. But as soon as bills start to uh, materialize when it deals with regulating a man's reproductive health, they don't think we're serious. Well, no, we don't. are. Yes, we are. And, and then, uh, is it possible, this is kind of a, a, a question, I don't know if you can answer this, but is it possible, these men who are getting these uh, drugs like Viagra, Cialis, and these other drugs, these erectile dysfunction drugs, they're getting them, they don't really need them, they're getting them for recreational purposes, and we, know, we all know what that's about. Can these men be charged? Is, that, is there any kind of a criminal component to this at all? Uh, not, I don't think so, okay, not in regard to when it comes to the man, but Viagra and other such erectile dysfunction drugs are on the black market, and government needs to do a better job of regulating those drugs. We know that the FDA has rules in place because they understand the serious risk associated, but again, there is an underground market for these drugs, 
that men really need to take this question because you're not supposed to have access to these drugs, even now, without a physician's prescription, as you pointed out in your introduction. But those are serious drugs. They have some very real side effects, and we must do a better job of making sure that they are regulated. Absolutely. And, and finally, Nina, how can people support you? How can people get behind you? Well, thank you, Carol. They can uh, definitely send emails and, and phone calls. They can email me and visit my website at www.ninaturner.org. Okay. And in Ohio, if they go to Progress Ohio, if they put Progress Ohio into Google, a petition will appear. And if they would sign on to that petition in support of the effort to regulate men's health in Ohio, that would be most appreciated. Carol, we need people to stand up, both men and women, to say that enough is enough with this foolishness, that people should not have to ask government for responsibility, or excuse me, people should not have to ask, have a permission slip from government to take care of the health of, and well-being of their bodies, be they men or women. That really policymakers here really need to stand up and fight the fight to make sure that our children are educated, that we put our citizens back to work and that people live in safe and viable neighborhoods and quite frankly that small businesses have what they need to employ people. So if they would sign that petition saying that what's good for the goose is good yeah. for the gants, I would give you a or yeah, Progress Ohio. Thank you so much. And finally, yes, let me just add one more thing, because I know we have to have, if you are a like-minded person, if you're out there as a like-minded person, you got to run for office. I mean, am I correct, Nina? we got to get yeah. more people in office who are like-minded. We do, and, and this is a product of either our uh, inability or, or unwillingness to participate. Democracy is a participatory exercise. You cannot sit on the sidelines. So in actuality, we are getting elected officials that we deserve in many realities. So please, yes, your viewers, they have to get out and vote. They have to participate in the process. They have to stand up. You know, Sarah, Dr. King once said, what affects one directly affects us all indirectly. So it's women today. Who will it be tomorrow? We must stand up for what is right, what is just, and what is good. And we have to participate in democracy. Thank you so much. Nina Turner so eloquently said we thank you so much for your time joining us here on the Reality News Check. As you know, I am Carol Angela Davis. I thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your fight on behalf of all women and all Americans. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, Carol.